Wow, you caught a coral snake. The coral snake is a venomous snake that originally hails from the Americas. Its venom is a very potent neurotoxin, so don't let it bite you. If you do get bitten, go into the survival viewer right away and use cure to neutralize the poison with a serum injection. The colorful red and black patterns on the coral snake are a warning sign. Apparently, the bright flashy colors and pattern let other animals know that it carries a deadly poison that keeps them from attacking. There are many animals that mimic the colors of known poisonous animals as a defense. See, by mimicking other poisonous creatures, they increase their chances of survival. There is another non-poisonous snake called the milk snake that borrows its coloring from the coral snake. Uh-huh. You're not even listening, are you? No. <sighs> okay, we'll talk about something you're interested in then. The taste? Yes. It says here that coral snakes are pretty good in a snaky kind of way. A snaky kind of way, huh? That area is inhabited by the Taiwanese cobra. The Taiwanese cobra is native to Taiwan and southern China. It's quite vicious and carries a potent neurotoxin in its fangs. Be careful. If it bites you, go into the survival viewer immediately and use the cure option to inject yourself with serum. Sounds interesting. Don't ask me. Huh? The guide doesn't say. If you absolutely have to know, then you'll just have to try it yourself and see. I didn't say anything. But you were going to ask, weren't you? About the taste? Maybe. I'll talk to you later, Snake. I see you've captured a giant anaconda. The giant anaconda is believed to be the largest snake in the world in terms of weight and diameter. It's not poisonous, but its large size makes it extremely powerful. They say it even eats crocodiles. Its only natural predator is man. And snake. And snake. Got it. So how does it taste? I knew you were going to ask me that. Glad I didn't disappoint you. So? Well, the guide says it tastes all right. Good. I'll have to try some. Ugh. I see you've caught a Thai Cobra. The Thai Cobra is a large venomous snake that carries an extremely potent neurotoxin. Be careful not to get bitten. If you do get bitten, go into the survival viewer right away and use Cure to give yourself a serum injection. The Thai Cobra originally comes from Indochina, Thailand, and Southern China. The ones in that area were probably imported as pets and research subjects before they escaped and turned feral. Not as food? Come again? They weren't imported as food. They're not for eating. So they don't taste good then? That's not my point. It's not a matter of whether they taste good or not. People don't raise snakes for food, period. Okay. So you're saying they might be good to eat, right? Only one way to find out. I see you caught yourself a green tree python. The green tree python isn't venomous, so no need to worry. It's fairly docile, too, so I don't think it's likely to attack you. The green tree python originally comes from Australia and New Zealand. It's a really pretty green color and it lives... Oh my god. What's wrong? Snake, what did I just say? They come from Australia and New Zealand. No, after that. They're a really pretty green color. I thought so. What was I thinking? Seeing a snake and calling it pretty? What's wrong with that? Everything! When a normal woman sees a snake, she's supposed to scream or get sick or something like that. And do you think you're normal? What was that? N nothing. Ugh, it's all your fault. Jeez, I'm sorry. But enough of that. What do you mean, enough of that? This is serious. No, I... I just wanted you to tell me how it tastes. How should I know? Ugh. It was awfully pretty, though. I see you caught yourself a reticulated python. The reticulated python is said to be the longest snake in the world. The biggest ones can grow up to 10 meters in length. Although they're not poisonous, they're still very dangerous, so be careful around them. They have a highly ferocious temperament, and they can swallow whole, even large animals like deer and pigs. Their most distinguishing feature is the mesh pattern of their scales. 
This pattern acts as a highly effective natural camouflage. If you think there might be a reticulated python about, pay close attention to your surroundings. Otherwise, you could get bitten before you even know it's there. Right. But how do they taste? Huh? Do they taste good? You're actually going to eat one. Why else would I be asking? Cannibal. What was that? Nothing. Let's see what the guide says. Ah, you're in luck. It says they taste pretty good. Good. I can hardly wait. Ugh. I see you've caught a king cobra. The king cobra is the world's largest venomous snake. Its large size means that it has a lot of venom to inject. One bite is supposedly enough to kill an elephant. And it's extremely vicious as well, so watch out. If you get bitten by a king cobra and injected with venom, your life will start to decrease rapidly. As soon as you're bitten, go into the survival viewer and use Cure to give yourself a serum injection. The king cobra's diet consists mostly of other snakes. Be careful, or you might end up as its next meal. Got it. So... What? How does it taste? Yep. Ugh. It seems you're the one whose diet consists of other snakes. You're making me blush. The guide says they taste just fine. Hmm. I see you've caught a coral sn I, I mean, a milk snake. The milk snake closely resembles the coral snake, but it's actually not venomous. Even so, you'll still take damage if it bites you, so don't get too close. Hmm. So is there a way to tell the difference between a milk snake and a coral snake? It's pretty difficult. They really do look almost exactly alike. I guess if I had to pick something, I'd say it's that the milk snake is much less aggressive. Okay. Ah, I just thought of a better way. You're going to love this. What? Eat it. Eat it? Yeah. The guide says milk snakes don't taste very good. Is that right? But if I've already caught and eaten it, what does it matter which kind of snake it was? It doesn't, does it? Shoot, I thought I had a good idea. <laughs> snake, you caught a Tsuchinoko. What? Is it true, Snake? Yeah. Way to go, my man. You really are the boss's apprentice. Yes, it looks like sending you in was worth it after all. Hurry up and finish your mission and then bring it back to us. Under no circumstances are you to eat it, is that clear? <sighs> I see you've caught yourself a big eye trevally. The big eye trevally is a type of mackerel. The adult fish lives around coral reefs, but the young can be found in freshwater areas such as estuaries and rivers. Good to know. So, how do they taste? Hmm, the guidebook doesn't say. Huh. Well, if they're a kind of mackerel, they should be okay to eat, right? You'd think so, but. But what? Well, I've heard stories about people getting ciguatera poisoning after eating the adult fish. Ciguatera poisoning? Uh-huh. Fishes that live near coral reefs are sometimes contaminated with a poison known as ciguatera toxin. It apparently gives you food poisoning when you eat it. So I can't eat those big-eyed trevally? I don't know whether those trevally are contaminated with ciguatera or not, but use caution just in case. I see you've caught yourself a maroon shark. The maroon shark is found mostly in Southeast Asia, but it's not actually a shark. It's related to the carp. It's also known as the red fin cigar shark, the river barb, and the sultan fish. Interesting. So how does it taste? According to the guide, it's good, but it's kind of oily and it has a lot of little bones. Fine with me. I never worry about the little things. So I gathered. I see you've caught yourself an arowana. The arowana is an ancient fish that lives in tropical freshwater areas. Because of its large size, I don't think you'll be able to capture one alive. Ancient fish like the arowana are living fossils. They've hardly changed their forms since the Devonian and Jurassic periods. Other ancient fish besides the arowana include the coelacanth, the starlet, and the knifefish. 
Almost all organisms on Earth have evolved in various shapes and forms, but these fish have kept the same form for hundreds of millions of years. Baffling, isn't it? Sure. Well, I can see you're not interested. Not at all. I'm fascinated by ancient fish. Why? They're supposed to be huge, aren't they? You're wondering whether they'd make a good meal. Yeah. So, do they? The guide says they taste just fine for a fish. Great. I see you've captured a poison dart frog. The poison dart frog is native to the tropical rainforest of Central and South America. They normally grow between two and five centimeters in length, but for some reason the ones in that area seem to be much bigger than that. Poison dart frogs are known to carry a potent neurotoxin called homiliotoxin. Long ago, people used the poison to coat their arrows for hunting. Watch out, because if you eat one, you'll get food poisoning. Snake, that's the home to the otten frog. The otten frog is a large, corpulent species of frog. They're known as a delicacy, so it might be worth catching them for food. The otten frog was originally found only on Amami Oshima in Japan. Frogs usually have four toes on their front legs, but the otten frog is unique in that it has five. Got it. By the way, you said they were known as a delicacy, right? Right. So that means they must taste pretty good, huh? I guess so. I hear that in Japan, otten frog sashimi and sukiyaki are popular dishes. Really? Yeah. Japan, huh? That place is starting to sound better and better. I see you've caught a tree frog. The tree frog is a green frog that's found throughout Asia. It's arboreal, spending most of its time in shrubs and bushes. But the tree frogs that live in that jungle are a lot bigger than ordinary tree frogs. They've got an appetite, huh? You've got a one-track mind, don't you? But seriously, that is one theory. However, there are people who think it's a mutation caused by nuclear testing and waste from the research facility. Do you think they're safe to eat? Is that all you ever think about? What else is there? Lots. Like what? Like why a frog would get so big in the first place. Whether it's a temporary phenomenon created by a unique environment, or a permanent mark of evolution, or a product of the toxic waste coming out of the research facility. If it is the waste that's causing it, then it means humans are interfering with the ecosystem. It really makes you think about the changing relationship between... This isn't interesting. Oh, fine. Be that way. So, how about it? You mean, is it edible? Yeah. Hmm. Well, I guess it's probably okay. Probably? I don't know. The guide doesn't say anything. Pretty useless guide, if you ask me. Well, try one for dinner and you can help improve it. I see you've caught yourself a Sunda whistling thrush. The Sunda whistling thrush is a bird native to Java and Sumatra. It's distinguished by its large blue body and long beak. It really stands out in the forest. Got it. So... How does it taste? Yeah. I don't know. You don't know? The guide doesn't say. I guess there's no reason you couldn't eat them. Oh, I see. But it's nice and plump, so I'm sure it'd make a hearty meal. That's a good point. Ugh. I see you've captured a magpie. Magpies are members of the crow family. They're distinguishable by their beautiful dark blue and white bodies and their long tails. Their favorite food is insects, but they'll also eat small fish, acorns, and fruit. They're omnivores, which means... They'll eat anything. Right. Just like you, huh? Okay. So how do they taste? You always ask me that. Naturally. So? I've never heard of anybody actually eating a magpie, but I suppose there's no reason you couldn't. You don't say. Oh. I see you've captured a white-rumped vulture. The white-rumped vulture is a type of vulture found in India. Its diet consists mostly of dead animal carcasses. I don't think it'll attack you, but it's a fairly large bird of prey, so you probably won't be able to capture it alive using the tranquilizer gun. Got it. But there is something here that's bothering me. What is it? They say the white-rumped vulture doesn't just eat animal carcasses. It eats human ones as well. Is that so? Yeah. 
So then if a person eats a white rumped vulture, does that mean he's eating human meat too? What do you think? Stop it already. You're gonna make me lose my appetite. I see you've caught yourself a red avatavat. The red avatavat is a small bird native to southern China and southeast Asia. This is its mating season, so the males ought to be a brilliant red color right now. I see. How do they taste? The... what? The flavor. You... you're not going to eat such a cute little bird, are you? Yeah. Oh. Something bothering you? No. Okay then, so, how about it? How should I know? Paramedic, I caught a parrot. What kind of parrot? It's green all over with a large beak. Then it's probably an Alexandrian parakeet. It's sometimes also called the Alexandrian parrot. The Alexandrian parakeet originally comes from Indochina and is distinguished by its green body and red beak. It's very talkative and makes a good pet. But it's strange. The guide doesn't say anything about there being Alexandrian parakeets in that area. I'm thinking it must be someone's pet that got away. Hmm. Snake. What? Don't even think about it. Eating a cute little bird like that. But I didn't say. Just don't. I see you have a calorie mate. Calorie mate? The thing you're holding now? Oh, the little block that looks like a cookie? Try it, it's pretty good. Okay, but what is this thing? Never seen anything like it. Calorie Mate is an energy supplement that contains all the proteins, lipids, vitamins, carbohydrates, and minerals needed for a balanced diet. It's a well-balanced food. Because of that, it's just perfect for giving your body the nutrition it needs in combat. It sounds like a space-age food. Real astronaut food is not very good, but that should taste fine. Yeah, and it'll help balance out all this jungle food I'm eating. It's easy and quick to eat, so it's perfect when you're running late for an important mission in the morning. I've never been late for a mission. Really? Aren't you always keeping people waiting? Uh-huh. It's easy to keep track of your calorie intake and receive the nutrition your body needs, so it's good for losing weight, too. All of the geisha girls in Japan use it for watching their calories. Is that why they're all so slim? Right. And any diet where you eat nothing at all is bad for the body. I see. You seem to know a lot about Japan, don't you? Yes, I love Japan. You got some instant noodles, huh? Instant noodles? Uh-huh. It was invented in Japan just recently. Add some hot water and it's ready to eat. It's cheap and can be stored for a long time. And besides, it's delicious. It's like a miracle food. Wow. Speaking of which... Yeah? Are you going to eat that? I was planning on it, yeah. Oh, all right. Is there some reason I shouldn't? No, that's not what I meant. Then what did you mean? I was just going to say that if you weren't going to eat it, you should bring it back to me. I've always wanted to try some. Whatever. I see you've got yourself a ration. Rations are portable meals carried by Soviet soldiers. I've heard some nasty stories about how they taste. It looks like the rumors are true. Great. Hey. You should be grateful. Those things are designed to last. No matter how long you keep a ration, it'll never go bad. And they're surprisingly good for you, too. I'd take a snake over this any day, even if it's a little rotten. You are hopeless. I see you've captured an Indian gavial. The Indian gavial is a crocodile that originally lived in freshwater regions in India and Nepal. Why are Indian crocodiles way out here? They're captive crocodiles that were brought here for research purposes, but escaped and became wild again. Indian gavials are large creatures. Adult males grow to over six meters in length. You'll never catch one alive, even if you use the tranquilizer gun. Got it. So, how do they... Taste? Yes, I did look into that. You know what they always say. Tastes like chicken. Sounds delicious. But be careful when capturing an Indian gavial. Normally they're cowardly creatures. 
But the ones in the forest there are belligerent. Apparently they attack humans. What do you mean? They weren't the direct subject of any serious research, but some think they may have become violent as a side effect of the atomic research that was conducted nearby. I see you caught yourself a rat. The rats in that area are the descendants of wild Norway rats that were domesticated by humans as pets and lab animals. They're not poisonous, and I don't think they'll attack you, but they're quick little creatures, so you might have a hard time catching one. Uh-huh. So how do they taste? Snake. What? They're rats. I know what they are. Do they taste okay? <sighs> the guide says they're not that bad. Good enough for me. Ugh. I see you've caught a European rabbit. The European rabbit is said to have come from the Mediterranean region originally, but nowadays they're found all over the world. They've been used since ancient times as a source of food, so it might be worth catching them. Rabbits are known to eat their own excrement. Uh, they eat their own? That's right. It's called cecal feces. When the rabbit eats fiber, the fiber is fermented in the rabbit's appendix, or cecum, and turned into a nutritious substance full of vitamins. The rabbit excretes the substance and then eats it again to absorb the nutrients. That's a neat trick. I think I'll give it a try. Snake! Rabbits and humans don't work the... I'm just kidding. You really thought I was going to eat it? A little, yeah. Even I wouldn't do that. I guess not. But how do those seagull feces taste? What? I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> I see you caught yourself a Japanese flying squirrel. Japanese flying squirrels are non-venomous, and they shouldn't attack you. The head, front legs, hind legs, and tail of the Japanese flying squirrel are connected by a membrane of skin, which allows the squirrel to glide from tree to tree. It says here that if it catches a good wind, it can fly more than a hundred yards. Yeah, I had a hard time catching one. So, aren't you going to ask me? You know it. How does it taste? Not sure. Not sure? The guy doesn't say anything about it. Why not? Gee, maybe it's because no one would ever think of eating a flying squirrel. Then I must be the first one. Maybe you are. I see you've caught a vampire bat. The vampire bat bites its victims and sucks their blood. Got it. Speaking of bats... Just save it. Huh? I know you're gonna talk about vampire movies, Attack of the Vampire Donuts, or... Dracula versus the space hippos, or something like that. Actually, I was going to say that bats are known to use supersonic waves to sense their surroundings. Uh oh Bats use supersonic waves to sense their surroundings, so you might be able to keep them away by blasting them with a special kind of sound wave. Alternatively, you could try equipping a torch and waving it around with the CQC button. As for taste, I suppose there's no reason you couldn't eat them. Snake, do you hate vampire movies? What? Just now, you sounded like you really hated them. I did? Yeah. Oh. Well, no one really likes them, do they? Some people do. Like you? Yeah. They're fascinating, you know? Like the movie Dracula... Don't say it. Why not? Just don't. Are you afraid? What? You're afraid of vampires, aren't you? Don't be ridiculous. But... Listen, there are no such things as vampires. They're just a stupid, made-up legend. And if they do seem real sometimes... Well, sure. You think I'd be afraid of something like that? No. Exactly. Right. I'm not afraid of vampires. Uh-huh. It's just that whenever somebody starts talking about vampires, I end up dreaming about them that night, and I don't need that right now. That's all. Okay. I see you caught a markor. The markor is a kind of wild goat that lives in mountainous areas. It's quite large, so I don't think you'll be able to capture one alive, even with the tranquilizer gun. All right. Speaking of which, do you know the origin of the name markor? No. It means snake eater in Persian. Snake eater? Lost your appetite? 
Not at all. So, how does it taste? It's supposed to be pretty good. All right. I see you've caught yourself a Kenyan mangrove crab. The Kenyan mangrove crab is a land-going crab. It lives in burrows dug near seashores and mangrove swamps. It's not poisonous, but it might hurt a little if it attacks you with its pinchers. Treat it with caution. Got it. So this thing must taste pretty good, huh? Why do you say must? It's a crab, isn't it? It is. And crabs are good to eat. What's so good about them? You don't like crab? Not at all. Why not? Why? How can you eat those things? They're all purple and yellow striped, and they stink like cat pee. <laughs> but that's just my opinion. Don't listen to me. Let's see here. The guide says... No way. It says they're delicious. Well, if you want to eat one, then go right ahead, but count me out. I see you've caught a cobalt blue tarantula. The cobalt blue tarantula is a poisonous spider with a highly potent venom. If you get bitten, go into the survival viewer immediately and use cure to administer a serum injection. There are many different varieties of tarantulas. The cobalt blue is part of a group called earth tigers. They build their nests mainly underground and are highly aggressive. Their diet consists of not only insects, but also mice and even snakes. Interesting. So, how do they taste? Are you really going to eat them? Naturally. So? It says here they're not very good. Damn. Don't act so surprised. Isn't it obvious? Why would it be obvious? It's a spider, for goodness sake. A big one, but still a spider, and there's not much to it. Yeah. If only it were as big as the one in Earth versus the spider. The what? Earth versus the spider. It's a movie about this gigantic spider. When it's small, it's about 15 feet wide. But when it's big, it's about 35 feet wide. What do you mean, when it's small and when it's big? The size changes from scene to scene. It happens all the time. Huh. I see you've caught yourself an Emperor Scorpion. The Emperor Scorpion is said to be the largest scorpion in the world. Its venom is a potent neurotoxin, so take care that you don't get stung. If you do get stung, go into the survival viewer and use Cure to inject yourself with serum right away. Okay. So how's it taste? Not very good, I'm afraid. No. Don't get so discouraged. There are other ways to use it besides eating it, right? Like what? Like catching one alive with a tranquilizer gun and throwing it at the enemy? Oh, yeah. Sometimes I wonder if you even remember that you were on a mission. I see you found some Siberian ink cap mushrooms. The Siberian ink cap is a mushroom from the ink cap family. Its life cycle is transitory. As soon as the spores mature, the cap starts to turn black, liquefy, and melt away. And that's why they call it an ink cap? That's right. It doesn't really turn to liquid, but you get the idea. In its immature state, before it melts away, it's valued as a source of food. Just be sure not to eat them while you're drinking alcohol. Why's that? Ink caps contain coprin, which inhibits the function of aldehyde dehydrogenase. This prevents the body from breaking down alcohol, causing a buildup of acetaldehyde. Meaning? Meaning it will give you the hangover from hell. Oh. Wait a minute. What? You think I'd drink alcohol in the middle of a mission? Wouldn't you? Hell no. Well, I'm knocking a shot back now. What? Just teasing you. No. Oh, come on. Where's your sense of humor? I need a drink. I see you found some Russian glow caps. The Russian glow cap is a kind of luminescent fungus. A mushroom that glows in the dark. Why would a mushroom glow in the dark? It's bioluminescent, just like a firefly. It uses the so-called luciferin luciferase reaction. To put it simply, luciferin reacts with luciferase in the presence of magnesium 2 plus ions, breaking it down into oxyluciferin and carbon dioxide. 
The carbonyl groups and the oxaliciparin are initially in an electrical excited state. When they return to their base state, they give off light. Did you get all that? Not really. Oh. By the way, does that mushroom recharge your batteries when you eat it? Huh? I mean, it seems like if you ate a glowing mushroom, it might recharge your batteries or something. Snake, your batteries are organic batteries. They produce electricity by utilizing the potential difference between cells. Organic batteries are known for their highly efficient energy conversion, but they still rely on chemical reactions between proteins and enzymes to... So you're saying they'll get recharged? Believe what you want. Great. Paramedic. What's up? You were right. About what? I ate a Russian glow cap and it charged up my batteries. Huh? What's wrong? I, uh, that's, that's great. Um, Snake, can you excuse me for a second? Sure. Did you just eat it? Yeah. There's no way eating a bioluminescent mushroom would cause your batteries to recharge. What do you think it means? Beats me. Maybe it's all in his mind. You mean like a placebo effect? <laughs> Why not? You've seen how gullible he is. Well, I guess there's no harm done. Should we let him keep believing it? Sounds good to me. Okay, Snake, I'm back. Yes, the Russian glow cap is a glowing mushroom, so it'll recharge your batteries when you eat it. I see you found a Russian false mango. The Russian false mango is a mango-like fruit found only in Salino Yarsk. The egg-shaped fruit is sweet and tangy with a pleasing aroma, just like a mango. Also, the seeds can be used to make a medicine that aids in digestion. It might come in handy if you ever have an upset stomach. I see you found a bicle scaly tooth. The bicle scaly tooth mushroom is used as an antidote to poison. It usually grows on the trunks of trees, so look for it there. How does it taste? I think you're going to be disappointed. Damn. Oh, quit your whining. You know what they say, good medicine tastes bitter. I see you found a vine melon. The vine melon is a kind of melon commonly found in Salino Yarsk. Like the name says, it's a melon that grows on a vine. The flesh is crisp and delicious. The vine melon is full of potassium and carotene, so it's good for you as well. Next time you see a vine, why not check to see if there's a melon growing on it? I see you've got yourself a Baltic hornet's nest. Baltic hornets are a variety of hornets that inhabit that area. The difference between them and other hornets is that they produce honey in their nests. Inside the nests are larvae, pupa, and adults. You can eat them all. In particular, the honey you find inside the nest is delicious and full of nutrients. It's easy to digest and helps pep you up when you're feeling tired. In short, it's the perfect survival food. Honey can also be used as a burn ointment. When honey is applied to a burn, it creates a protective coating over the skin. When you knock down a hornet's nest, a burn ointment will appear along with it, so don't forget to pick it up. Of course, the hornets aren't going to give up their nest without a fight. If you knock a nest down, a large swarm of hornets will come flying out, so be careful. I see you found a Yabloko Maloko. Yablo what now? Yabloko Maloko. It's a Russian name that roughly translates as milk apple. It's a type of star apple. The juice is thick and sweet, like milk, hence the name. And if you cut one in half lengthwise, you'll see a star-shaped ring radiating out from the center. Hence the star apple. Right. The star-shaped part has a gelatinous texture and is said to be especially tasty. Sounds useful. You're welcome. For once. Did you say something? No, uh... Back to the mission. 
Looks like you found a Golova. Golova? Yeah, it's a fruit that's found only in that region. It's related to the jackfruit, which is commonly found in Southeast Asia. Jackfruit, huh? Yep, he's a cannibal. Huh? I didn't say anything. No, I'm sure you... I said, I'm sure you'd like it. Oh. Golova means head in Russian. It's probably called that because the fruit grows to about the size of a human head. It's supposedly pretty good to eat with a uniquely sweet flavor. The fruit itself is fairly large, so you can make a meal out of it. Golovas grow directly off the trunk of the tree. If you're running low on stamina, it might be a good idea to keep an eye on the tree trunks. I see you found some Russian oyster mushrooms. The Russian oyster mushroom is an edible variety that belongs to the Shimeji family. It's known to be particularly rich in vitamin B1 and niacin. Apparently, it's usually found growing on tree stumps and hollow logs, so look there if you want to eat some. I see you found some fly agaric mushrooms. The fly agaric is a relative of the death cap mushroom that grows only in that region. You'll find it growing on the ground, but it's poisonous, so if you pick one up, don't eat it. If you do eat one, go into the survival viewer immediately and use cure to take some antidote. The poisons found in the fly agaric include phallotoxins and amatoxins. It says here that when you eat it, the initial symptoms include nausea, stomach pain, and diarrhea. Finally, your liver and kidneys will break down into a sponge-like substance and you die. Sounds like a horrible way to die. Isn't it? Yeah. So how does it taste? Huh? How does it... Were you listening to me? The fly agaric is poisonous. I heard you, but if I did eat it, it might taste good, right? I give up. I see you found some Ural luminescent mushrooms. The Ural luminescent mushroom is a mushroom found only in Selenoyarsk. It looks like a shiitake mushroom, and it's often found growing on the trunks of trees. If it looks like a shiitake mushroom, then it must be edible, right? Yep. I can't guarantee that it'll taste just like a shiitake mushroom, though. Saving the game, Snake? I see you found a Spatsa. Spa. Spatsa. Spatsa? Right. Interesting name. Hmm. Hmm. Uh. Huh. So paramedic. What? What kind of mushroom is a spatza? Uh. You really want to know? I guess so. Okay. Let's see. The spatza. Yeah. It's gray. Hmm. And it grows on the ground. Yeah. And. That's all. That's all. That's all the guide says. Okay, so I don't know that much about it. Why don't you eat one and see? It might be pretty tasty. Eat one and see? What do I look like, a lab rat? Shh. What? What did I say? What if the rats hear you? You'll hurt their feelings. <laughs>